Good morning, everybody. How is everyone on this 4th of July? Woo Happy 4th of July. Why don't you stand to your feet? We're going to sing a song that everybody knows pretty well. God bless America. We're just going to sing a blessing over our country today. And thank God for our country. So sing with me.
and I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness, and I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness, and I will rest in your promises. My confidence, yes, is your faithfulness, and I will rest oh, in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. Faithful. Faithful. 
It says, Blessed is he whose hope is in the Lord his God. The Lord sets the prisoners free and gives sight to the blind. And in also in John, it says, Then will you know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And the, to know the truth, that is Jesus Christ. He said himself, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. And Paul said to, to the Romans, you have been set free from sin. And in, in Revelation uh, 1.5, it says, To him who loves us, he has freed us from our sins. By his blood, he has made us to be a kingdom and priests. So not... The, the kingdom of God is, is right here in us, and he's also given us uh, the, the priestly uh, authority that we can give that, we can uh, stand between people that don't know God and God. We're, we are the priests that, that you can come to and, and seek God. So uh, as, as we celebrate this morning, we rem remember what Jesus did for us. We'll take the bread first. This bread, this represents the body of Jesus Christ broken for us, uh, that, that we might have life eternal. Take and, and eat this. continue to uh, worship a little bit. We've got two more songs left. If any, any time you guys want to give an offering, uh, the offering table is going to be over there at the connection point. You can do that now or you can do that whenever you like. For I 
spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Yes, you have. For I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. So, so kind to me. Sing it out.
this last song we're going to play is called The Blessing by Elevation Worship. The verse chords, or the verse lyrics are, The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So whatever that looks like to you, however you want to worship this morning, just thank God for this beautiful, beautiful day. And we'll worship together.
children and their children may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening and you're coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 want to just go ahead and just take your seats. We're going to have uh, Sir Zachary Gass come up and uh, share a message. We're going to tag team him and Jonathan. So let's hear it for Zach. Worship today was amazing. And it's great to know that God is for us. And that's, he, he's always for us, regardless of the circumstances we find ourselves in. 
So today, we were asked to, to talk about change and what it means to us. And when I think of change, I think of learning and growth. I love to learn, and it's only natural that we'll be what comes to my mind first, because that's pretty much what I spend the majority of my time doing, is learning. As I was preparing for this sermon, I was trying to think of a biblical figure to tie my understanding of change to, and also who is a student, and I thought of Daniel. Oh. Sorry. Is that a little better? Yeah. yeah. All right. Start over. Start over? All right, here we go, from the beginning. So, for those of you who couldn't hear, we're talking about change today. And when I think about change, I think about learning and growth. And that's only natural for me, because I love to learn. And as I was preparing for the sermon, I was thinking of a biblical figure who went through a lot of changes and, you know, also loved learning, and Daniel came to mind. So, there are some points from the book of Daniel that inspired me the most about how he dealt with change. The first point is when going through a difficult change and when times are tough, remember to always keep a positive attitude, just like Daniel did. Daniel definitely went through lots of change. While he was a young adult, Judah fell to the Babylonians. His life got turned upside down. He was a young noble, and then with the fall of Ju Judah, he became a slave to an evil empire. But despite his external circumstances, he trusted God. There was something that no matter what external changes happened, they couldn't change his faith in God. He knew that no matter what, God was gonna be with him and would always walk with him. So just as the saying goes, life is 10% what happens and 90% your reaction, Daniel kept calm despite the external circumstances. He didn't give up and he knew that God would be with him through it all. During this upheaval, he didn't know all the answers he had to do his best to navigate all the difficult problems that he had to face. He had to pick his battles. There was one particular battle where the students, the, the nobles, the young nobles of Judah were chosen to go serve the king and to become part of his court magicians. The Babylonians, they would sometimes take the nobles and train them in their ways so that way the people that they conquered would eventually feel like they were welcomed into the Babylonian empire as it expanded. And so part of that was they chose Daniel and a lot of his friends to go through the training that the Babylonian court magicians or wizards or you know, whichever word you choose to describe them, that's the training that they went through. So Daniel and his friends were chosen for this. They were provided with the king's meat and the king's wine, but Daniel didn't want to eat the meat because it was sacrificed to idols. And so in order to avoid doing this, he decided to make a change of his own. He approached the leader of the school and he said, I don't want to eat this meat, I want to eat vegetables. And how about after the end of 10 days of me and my friends all eating vegetables, you compare us to the rest of the students. This worried the leader of the school a little bit because if he failed to train these guys, his life was on the line. But God gave him favor and so he decided to trust Daniel and he let that happen for 10 days. And after 10 days, they compared the other students to Daniel and his friends, and it was found that they were healthier, brighter, happier, and even more studious than the others. So the leader of the school let it just continue that way. He said, hey, it's working great. We're just gonna let it keep going. The, the second point I'd like to bring up that Daniel thought, again, while he was in this school, he was required to learn occult things, you know, astrology and astronomy and things that you know, are not really the best practices, but Daniel, you know, decided that he would be the top of the class because he knew he wasn't working for man, he was working for God. And God created the stars, and so in studying them, he put a, maybe a different twist on it. He maybe thought about how God had created them, not how the Babylonians had been teaching to read stars, to prophesy, and things like that. Daniel decided that he would study and still dedicate his studies to God. So at the end of the class, they tested Daniel and his friends, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king at the time, found that Daniel and his friends were 10 times better than the other students. God was with Daniel in his learning, and he, he gave him favor with that. One day, King Nebuchadnezzar woke up from a dream, and he couldn't remember the dream, so he called his court wizards, and he said, I want you to not only interpret this dream, but also tell me what it was. And the court wizards said, that's unheard of. 
no ruler ever has asked a wizard to come up with the dream and the interpretation. That's impossible. Nebuchadnezzar didn't like that answer, so he said, well, if you can't do it, I guess I'm just going to have to kill all of you. And so they were like, well, we can't do that. There was no power on earth that was able to help them know both the dream and the interpretation. So Nebuchadnezzar sent his captain of the guard out to go kill all the, the wizards and the Chaldeans. And when the, the captain of the guard came to Daniel, Daniel says, wait, what's going on? The captain of the guard stopped. He didn't outright just slaughter Daniel like he had been instructed to. He said, here's what's going on. The king had a dream. He can't remember it. And since the other wise men or wizards can't figure it out, the king said to kill everyone. And Daniel says, wait, just tell the king to ask me. Give me some time. And I think I, think I can do this. And he was thinking through God he can do it. And so... It's, it's pretty interesting. Daniel must have been living an upright enough life that the captain of the guard respected and trusted Daniel enough that he would listen to Daniel despite, again, being a direct order from the king that he should go kill all the wizards. He decided to wait and trust Daniel. So he went to the king and he said, there's a young man named Daniel who thinks that he could possibly tell you your dream. So Nebuchadnezzar says, all right, we'll give him some time. So Daniel got together with his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they went off and they prayed. And they prayed, God, we know you know the dream. We know you know the interpretation. Can you provide it for us? And after prayer, God provided it to Daniel. And so Daniel went up to Nebuchadnezzar and told him both the dream and the interpretation. And Daniel praised God. He said, look, there's no power on earth that can do this, but there is a God in heaven who can. And so because of that, now through this God, we are able to give you this dream interpretation. And Nebuchadnezzar was really impressed by this, and he praised God. And he, he gave Daniel rulership over the province. But unfortunately, Nebuchadnezzar didn't really change his heart. It didn't really turn him around. He said, praise God, this thing's amazing, but he didn't let it really seep into his life. So through a lot of this, God gave Daniel the favor so that he could display God to the godless nation. And the third point I had is, when we go through difficult changes, let us always remember it is God who guides us through. Sometimes the hard times we go through are like a refining fire. God is shaping us in those times. Sometimes we need to be open to the changes that God is making in our hearts. So after Nebuchadnezzar was so impressed with Daniel that he was able to tell him both the dream and the interpretation, he still didn't change. Nebuchadnezzar, if you know anything about him, he had an ego problem. God warmed him of this in another dream. Uh, Daniel interpreted this dream for Nebuchadnezzar as well. And what he said was, this is what God is saying to Nebuchadnezzar. If you don't change your attitude, if you don't realize that it is God in heaven who is giving you the power to rule over the earth right now, then you will be as the beast of the field. You'll be wet with the dew and you'll eat the grass like an ox. So, unfortunately, Nebuchadnezzar didn't really listen to that. He was one day walking around Babylon, and he was looking at you know, all the mighty things that they had done and the treasures that they had taken from other kingdoms. And he said, look at this kingdom. I built this. With my own hands, I did this. And right there, he became dumb as a beast and was forced to wander out in the fields and eat grass. And so that was the consequence. But after that, after the time when he recovered his, you know, his cognition and his thinking, and he, he was no longer like the animal of the field, he returned to power of the throne. And he wrote, he said, praise God, there is a God in heaven, and it is through him that we are given the power to rule the earth. And so hopefully that changed Nebuchadnezzar there. We need to let God work in our hearts. God wants us to live a good life. Uh, just recently, I had a discussion with some door-to-door -door evangelists, and we were discussing how God's grace is sufficient, and once you have it, you can never lose it. And once we let gr God's grace fill us, we should start to change to be more like Jesus. Sure, we might be saved, but if we do not change to look more like Jesus, how will we lead others to Jesus? So we need to, we need to have the changes that are happening in our hearts also show outwardly. This is also, as I was thinking of it, reminded me of a point from Lynn Hiles. He said, Jesus wants our lives to be an example, 
And when people look at our lives, they should say, wow, I want what they have. That is a great opportunity to share the gospel. And that isn't to say that our lives will always be easy all the time. And when people see our reactions to difficult situations, they should want our calm. We should have peace. Not peace like the world gives, but Jesus' peace. Another story in the book of Daniel, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were about to be tossed into the fire because they refused to worship that golden statue that Nebuchadnezzar made of himself, they said to Nebuchadnezzar, we won't worship. Our God is able to save us even from the fire. And even if he doesn't, we're still not going to worship your God because we know the true God. And so Nebuchadnezzar had them tossed into the fire. And he was amazed to see that they came out unharmed. Not even their hair or clothes were singed. And so that's another thing. Like They led upright lives, and they became a great example to the people around them because God was with them. They really had God's calm. Even in the face of adversity, their response was amazing. You know, they're being threatened with death, and they just said, our God's able to save. So even though there are difficult changes that, you know, Daniel went through and his friends, God was still with them. And because they maintained their constant faith with God, God protected them and actually gave them favor with the godless nation that they could be an example for others. I hope to take inspiration from the life of Daniel and how he stayed faithful to God despite the changing circumstances around him. As Peter said, let us always be ready to give a defense for the hope that lives within us. We can make a part of that defense the way we live our lives. We can let God make a change in our hearts so that when people see us, they see Jesus. I don't have to preach, right? <laughs> you know, pastor came to Zach and I and said, hey, uh, I want you guys to talk about change because that's, that's our word for the year at New Life Fellowship is change. And so I'm like, okay, great. What are we going to talk about? Let's see. There's changing of the seasons. There's changing of the tides. There's changing of the guards. There's changing the time. You know, change happens. Change is inevitable except for vending machines never can get those quarters back. Um, you know, I was thinking about just just recent history, and uh, I saw a stat that stuck out with me, that there were 66 years between the Wright brothers learning to fly and man walking on the moon. So think about it. The you know, chariots were you know, horse-drawn, you know, that, that was the fastest form of transportation up until like the 1800s and then trains were invented and then you know you start automobiles and airplanes and spaceships so we've gone in less than 200 years we've gone from chariots to flying into space so you know chain ha change happens even the speed you know you figure how fast can a horse run pull, pulling something you know maybe 10 15 maybe 20 miles an hour and now we're, we're breaking the sound barrier. And so it's, you know, thinking of that, it's like, wow, you know, change really happens. You know, there's a lot of change that goes on. And then I, then I always think about it, God never changes. You know, God doesn't change. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But God wants us to change. You know, in... Um, 2 Corinthians says, therefore, anyone who's in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone and the new is here. You know, God wants us all to change. And even looking back in the Bible, you know, look at just, just the changing of the names of people. Abram to Abraham, Saul to Paul, you know, healings. That changed people. People grew up, you know, blind or crippled and Jesus touches them and heals them and now all of a sudden they've changed because now they can walk they can see they can move you know the other thing i thought of when i was thinking about changes it was that uh, godfrey Bertle song and it was just one touch from the king changes everything and how you know it really it is it only takes one touch from god 
to change, you know, your whole life. Um, you know, look at the disciples. Bunch of fisher guys sitting there fixing their nets. Jesus walks up to them and says, hey, come with me. I'm going to make you fishers of men. So their whole occupation changed. Throughout that time, their, their lives have changed. Their, their purpose has changed. Now, instead of just trying to squeak out a, a living catching fish, they're, they're saving souls. You know, even people here in the church have had miracles, healings. Uh, sometimes it's, it's something small. Hey, I had a, you know, I hurt my finger and now it doesn't hurt anymore. Um, you know, we know people who have been raised from the dead. They, you know, they've been prayed over, they've been declared dead, they were prayed over, and then they're, they're alive again. You know, when Jesus came, you know, Jesus the King, when he showed up, he changed how we were supposed to live. He changed how we got to heaven. The old covenant was by our works. You had, you know, the follow the Ten Commandments and then the gazillion other commandments that all the, the, the Pharisees and everybody came up with. And Jesus says, no, all you have to do is accept me. I'm the way. I'm the way to get to heaven. You know, I'm changing things. You know, God told us, hey, you know, don't live, don't live the way you're living. You know, in Romans 6, you know, it says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning that grace may increase? By no means, we've died to sin, so why live in it any longer? You know, change the way you're living. Stop sinning. God wants us to change. You know, thinking about changing and, uh, you know, thinking about what, what we're supposed to do to change and, and how we change. And, you know, some things, some things just require time. You know, a caterpillar changing into a butterfly, a tadpole into a, a bullfrog. You know, that just takes a little time. You know, a little kid growing up to be an adult. That's just time. That's all it takes. Some things, it takes a lot of work and effort, you know. Like Zach was talking about with Daniel, he, he was a scholar. He, he put in effort to learn. You know, doctors and, and scientists, they go to school for years to, to learn their trade uh, and, and to try to better themselves. Um, just think about people, you know, athletes trying to get in shape, people trying to lose weight. You know, it takes time and effort. You know, it, it takes, takes a lot of work. But God's, God's change for our lives, all it is is just Jesus, I accept you. And Jesus, you know, Jesus, just, just, just take, take my life and giving it to him. And that's it. It's simple. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. But the full change to get from where he wants you to be, that'll take a little time. So our action item for this week, since Pastor Chris always likes action items, uh, it is to change. Think of something, one thing in your life that you need, that, you know, that God wants you to change. It could be something simple. It could be something big. Um, you know, it could be, hey, I want you to read your Bible more or pray more. It could be, hey, I want you to run a marathon. <laughs> uh, you know, it could be, hey, I want you to, to get a new job and whatever, you know, get an education. But start somewhere, you know, Listen to what God's telling you. Listen to where he's directing you. And just take that time and, and start somewhere. You know, everybody, everybody can do the first step. Let's pray. Father God, we just come before you, Lord, just to, just talk to us, Lord, and let us know where we need to change, how we become more like you, Lord. Just to... Bless this time, Lord. Um, bless us as we are about to have some fellowship, Lord, with the, the hot dogs and everything going on and, and uh, the picnic and the games, Lord. Just uh, help us to, uh, to get to know you and get to know each other, Lord. And uh, bless this, Lord, and bless this country, Lord, as we celebrate its independence. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Um, we do have the Light of Life Ministry hot dog. Chuck is here. Um, Lydia, you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. Hey, guys. 
Well, thank you for being here on July 4th. Um, this is a beautiful Sunday to just praise the Lord and just hear his message. So I just wanted to share a little bit um, about kind of what's going on for today. So we're going to have, uh, there's some games out in the lawn over there. You guys are welcome to just hang out, fellowship, um, take pictures, just enjoy yourself. It's a beautiful day to be outside. Um, we have Rita's Ice that is here, and so I believe uh, Sandy and Michael are going to be passing that out, and that is free to you, so you're welcome to have as, well, I, don't, I would say as much Rita's Ice, but I think we have a set amount that we have, so just have some and enjoy it. Um, and then we have our uh, Light of Life food rescue truck here. So um, I actually work at Light of Life, and so does Ryan, and uh, we have Mikey over there who's uh, manning the food truck right now. And I just wanted to share just a little bit as we're talking about change, um, just share a little bit of a testimony if that's okay with you guys. Um, so all the proceeds today are going to Light of Life Rescue Mission. So if you, you know, want to buy a hot dog or some fries, I think you might have some other things on the food truck, please feel free. Um, and feel free to even just donate anything that you like to Light of Life. Um, I do work there, and I work with the women and children in our programming in our uh, emergency shelter. And so we mostly work with women, uh, men, women, and children who are dealing with drug and alcohol abuse, um, a lot of mental health issues, a lot of people who are um, coming on the streets or coming off the streets and are looking for help. And more than anything, they're looking for Jesus, and they're looking for change. Um, the people who walk through our doors, we always kind of say, once you walk through the doors at Light of Life, you'll never never be the same. Um, that's something that Tunch and Wolf Ilkin would always kind of share about when they would come through the mission. That's that's what they would feel is the presence of God. And and that's why we are here on this earth, right, is we, we represent um, the King of Kings. We are ambassadors for him. And so... Um, so I just wanted to share just a little bit of a story of a woman who came in. This is about two months ago. Um, she came into Light of Life, and she was dealing with a serious crack addiction. Um, she was a little bit older woman, and we, we were able to help her get a shower and uh, actually find shelter for, for a good period of time. And I spent a lot of time with her, and we had a lot of fun uh, praying and worshiping together in our outreach day center. And uh, one of her favorite things that she loved to do is worship God. And so because I love worshiping God, too, we, we had a good connection together. And um, so there was one day where we had a devotional, and I was doing a devotion with her. And uh, part of the devotion was asking God, um, if you were in the throne room of heaven, what would you ask God right now? And so I just had, had us close our, uh, like close our eyes. And I said, hey, Miss Joanne, if, if, we, if you were just in heaven right now and you could ask God for anything, what would it be? And she looked at me and she said, you know what, Lydia? She's like, I, I really want to be clean and sober. I'm tired of this uh, drug addiction um, getting to me and, and I really want to see my children. I haven't been, I haven't seen my children in over several years. And um, so, you know, and I said, well, let's, let's pray about this and let's write it down and just see what God will do. And so we prayed about it and she wrote it down. And sure enough, you know, we had prayed and it was about, she was, she was in her shelter for about like two and a half weeks. And during that time, God was working on this situation. And because she was open to change and because she knew that God could change her, um, something amazing happened. And so it was Mother's Day. It was around Mother's Day when she was there. And um, her, her, she was praying for her son. She missed her son a lot. And um, her son was missing her mom too, or his mom. And so he actually prayed and he said, God, I, I really miss my mom. I'd like to get, you know, see her back in my life again. And so it was like a couple days later after that, um, she felt the nudge to, to actually get in touch with her son. And so she called her son and they actually were able to reconcile over the phone. And it was just a beautiful moment. They, they were able to forgive each other for past things that had happened in their family. 
and um, they actually were able to spend time together. And so what ended up happening is she ended up staying with him and was able to find a place and shelter with her son and get reconciled. Um, and I remember the time that she had come, came in and told me she just was so happy. I mean, she came in, um, you know, addicted, abused, uh, dealing with a lot of emotions and stress. And she left a very different person, and that's because God had changed her from the inside out. And so as we're talking about change, God is really the only one that can do that for us. And, and we have to be willing to, to let him and allow him to change that in us. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. That's just kind of what we do at Light of Life and stuff like that. And um, so if you have it in you and you'd like to just give uh, any, anything extra to Light of Life, that's what, that's what we're here. That's what we do. Um, and so, yeah. So thank you guys for all being here. We appreciate your time. And uh, at this point, we're just going to hang out, fellowship, eat some, f eat some food, and enjoy the day. All right? Yeah. Amen. So you're welcome to just stand up and hang out. <laughs>